Welcome back. One local nonprofit is raising awareness for a little known, often misdiagnosed and pervasive disorder. The Picking Me Foundation advocates for people struggling with compulsive skin picking or scratching by encouraging them to choose themselves over their mental illness. Lauren McKinney joins us with more. Lauren, such a pleasure to have you with us. Thank you. Um, I think you're going to enlighten us so much on this topic because this was a disorder that neither Sarah or I were very familiar with. Yeah, you know, um, that's actually pretty common right now. Mm -hmm. This has only been diagnosable since 2013. Um, dermatillomania or skin picking disorder is a body focused repetitive behavior related to but not the same as OCD that really is lacking uh, understanding, awareness, resources, support, and has no cure. Um, mm. But uh, we're out to change that. It's so obviously a cause that's very close to you as well because it was, when you were five years old, did this start for you? Yes, it, you know, um, first times I remember picking what uh, being at a summer camp and seeing myself lined up um, on the lake in swimsuits and just being polka dotted head to toe from the mosquito bites that I would pick repeatedly and mm. they'd last till Christmas. And I knew something was different about my skin and that behavior kind of ingrained itself in me as this way of self-soothing, if you will. And it followed me growing up, kind of affecting every area of my life. It's more than just picking a mosquito bite though, correct? Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, it's defined as repetitive picking, mm -hmm. sure, but um, causing physical damage, emotional duress, um, impeding your everyday life. I'm talking canceling plans, missing school, not showing up for work, spending hours in the mirror, fixing these perceived imperfections um, that I feel compelled uh, to fix myself. Of course, you have all of those um, mental, emotional, and, and I'm sure it was painful obstacles, but then on top of that, I'm sure for the entire family, your parents trying to figure out you know, what they could do to help you, that must have been so yeah. frustrating to go to the medical community and for them not to have an answer. Right, oh my goodness, it's so true. You know, I know my parents, they really tried everything um, from taking me to the top medical professionals whose advice and treatment was to stop picking, Lauren, you know, oh, just wow. stop picking. Oh. And um, I, I, I couldn't, you know, yeah. and I didn't know how to express that. And it really became an existence of shame and isolation in a lot of ways that um, marred and hampered my relationship with my family at times, but I'm mm -hmm. so proud of how supportive they've become in my journey with this disorder. And do you feel like it's something that you've been able to control now that you have a diagnosis? Yeah, you know, it's when I got the diagnosis, it was almost like armor. Like I had something that I could, you know, say I had, it does not have me and take some control back from this controlling disorder. And I wanted to tell everyone about it. And, uh, you know, it was in the first person who asked, you know, what's with your skin, which I often get asked with this illness, but I had a name, I had a mm. word, I had something to say, and I, I haven't shut up since, so. Well, because <laughs> having a real medical diagnosis validated you and your story, and, uh, and now, Tell us about how you've been telling everybody about it. Yes, so um, it really started as um, you know an online movement. I had a hashtag, hashtag picking me, which is all about picking me over picking me, you mm -hmm. know, choosing yeah. yourself over what chose you. And I started sharing my journey um, online and people joined the conversation. You know, one out of 20 do suffer with this illness. Um, and our community is out there. They just uh, needed a home, a foundation, and I am so happy and proud to foster that. And you guys are doing online support groups, even sending fidgets to people yes. just to keep hands busy, I assume. <laughs> yeah, fidgets. Um, we make awareness bracelets that have raised divots that actually give you something to redirect oh. that finger energy and have a wearable fidget of your own. We send resources to um, dermatologists, skincare providers, mental health um, clinicians. Our support group started with two people here in Chicago, myself and I in a small closet uh, in River North and has grown to our four, over 4,000 attendees wow. um, recently. And uh, you know, our people, I'm just so proud because um, we've been waiting so long to have some acknowledgement and validation mm -hmm. uh, for the struggle that this is more than just a bad habit. And it's really incredible to uh, get to share that now. Well, you are a trailblazer. And before we let you go, you've got a big event coming up. We do. It's our annual fundraiser called Mental Wellness. Uh, it's an evening honoring the will it takes to live with mental illness. Um, we'll be here in Chicago at Pippin's Tavern, May 10th. Um, we'll be featuring a silent auction with over 60 baskets from some awesome local staples mm -hmm. here in the city. 
and uh, there'll be support group members, members of the community, resources, character artists, dueling pianos, and more. So oh, for a good gosh, time yeah. and a great cause, please come out. Lauren, thank you so much for being here, for sharing your story mm -hmm. with us. Uh, the Picking Me Foundation's eighth annual mental wellness fundraiser is next Friday, again, May 10th. It's at Pippin's Tavern. For tickets, information, uh, head to pickingme.org. You can also find them on Instagram with any questions you may have.